All right. So our next uh, guest is David Rowe, VK5DGR. Uh, David Rowe was first licensed at the age of 14 in the early 1980s, operating a converted CB on 10 meters. Through the 1980s and high school, he progressed to a full call license and a TS520S. In 2009, he became interested in the problem of closed source codecs and digital voice and started working on FreeDV. David works as a part-time and uh, David works part-time as an engineer for an Internet of Things startup where he helps build and test CubeSats. He likes to blog on his projects, uh, drives a homebrew electric car, and also enjoys bike riding and sailing. Uh, please welcome David Rowe. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning to everyone because it's uh, 7.30 a.m. in Adelaide, South Australia. <laughs> I made sure I got a late start, a late slot in the uh, program. Um, but nice day, sun's coming up and uh, we're just uh, in the middle of our fall here. Okay, um, so I'll do the share screen thing. And does that come up all right? Hmm. Haven't seen it yet. Haven't seen it yet? Oh dear. Share screen. Oh, okay, I've got to select which one. There you go. How's that? Fantastic. Cool. Okay, so well, today I'll be talking about uh, FreeDV. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what FreeDV is, um, why you might want to use it, uh, what's in it for the uh, ham radio operators and experimenters, a little bit about how to get on the air with FreeDV. Um, I'll also be talking about um, some of the people involved. There's quite a team of uh, international people involved in uh, contributing to the project in various different ways. Uh, a little bit about some of the current modes. Um, as FreeDV develops, we've been developing different modes. We're currently up to um, 700C and 700D modes. Uh, 700 stands for how many bits per second. So that's coded speech at 700 bits per second. And uh, also there's another mode we call 2020, which is uh, pretty exciting. It uses something brand new called a, a neural net vocoder. So FreeV is uh, open source digital voice for HF and VHF radio. Um, it consists of um, some software parts, including a voice codec, a modem, and some forward error correction, uh, plus some sort of protocol code to wrap the whole thing together and make a complete usable uh, digital voice system. Uh, it, the way you use it is through uh, a GUI application. Um, it's also available as a uh, software library. Uh, so like an API that can be integrated into other STR applications. Um, a third way of using it is with some custom hardware, uh, the SM1000 FreeDV adapter. And it's being developed uh, by an international team uh, of hams. Okay, so one of the reasons you might be interested in FreeDV is that it really is on the leading edge of ham radio. Um, we're starting to get um, low signal to noise ratio performance that's competitive with SSB. Uh, when you're using digital voice, there's uh, no HF background noise. Um, and in particular, it's a voice mode designed by hams for hams. This is ground up um, construction of a digital voice system. Uh, we're not locked down by any commercial companies. We're not taking chipsets or algorithms or protocols from the commercial world. We're doing it all from the ground up. An important point is it's open source. Uh, every line of code, in particular the codec and modem. Uh, which have traditionally been locked down uh, by licenses and uh, other uh, closed source encumbrances, which means you weren't allowed to experiment with them. And uh, we think, you know, ham radio is all about experimentation. So those, those things should be open source and available to tinker with. So you've got this real freedom to experiment with no legal uh, barriers. And we've lowered some of the technical barriers uh, and given it a pretty low cost of entry. So how do you get on the air with FreeDV? Um, the most popular way is with the GUI application. Um, this combines the open source uh, modem and codec 2, the voice codec. Uh, it comes in the form of a, a desktop uh, GUI application for a variety of popular operating systems. And uh, you connect this to your SSB HF radio, and then you can uh, use it for digital voice. And it supports uh, the various digital voice modes that uh, are in FreeDV. Okay, so this is what the GUI uh, application looks like. Um, 
you have, uh, I'll just hopefully my mouse will come up. Uh, in the center, there's various displays of the waveform. This is showing um, the spectrum up the top here and then a waterfall display in the middle. Uh, down the left hand side, we have uh, various diagnostics such as signal to noise ratio, um, some indication of whether the modem's in sync uh, and some bit error rate statistics uh, to sort of let you know how good the uh, channel is. There's a little text channel down the bottom that you can use to put some um, call sign and location information. And uh, down the right hand side, we've got some other controls, in particular the modes here. Um, this is a, a somewhat older version. We've got a, quite a few more modes up here, but so you can select which mode you want to operate in. And uh, there's a PTT button here to put your radio in to transmit and receive uh, through uh, some sort of computer rated control. So that's uh, the FreeDV GUI application. Um, the way it works uh, is it connects to your PC, very similar to any other digital mode. Um, you have some sort of uh, sound interface device, which could be an external box, or some radios have USB sound cards in them. Um, the difference is um, you need a second sound card, and that's for you, for your voice, uh, because there's voice going into this system. So typically on transmit, you'd be talking into the microphone here, and it'd be going into free DV, and then getting um, put out onto the air as uh, modem tones. And in receive the opposite, you'd be receiving the modem tones on your radio, into your PC, and out of the headset. So typically we need a, another sound card. Um, this is for transmit and receive operation. And, and that's usually a, a headset, just like we're using today. That's quite common. Um, you can do receive only on FreeDV with a single sound card. So all you need is your uh, built-in sound card to get started at receiving FreeDV signals. Okay, so the other way to um, get on the air with, or one of the other ways, with 3 dv is with the SM1000. Um, this is a small custom hardware box that we've been developed. Um, it's an embedded 3 dv system, no PC is required. Uh, it's a, sort of a small box form factor about the size of a microphone. And uh, you connect that to your uh, SSB or FM radio and turn it into a digital voice radio. Uh, it has the built-in rig interfaces uh, like transformers and uh, opto isolators uh, to connect to your radio. That's all built in. Uh, and it's also um, open source hardware and software. Uh, we've ported all the uh, FreeDV software across to run on a little microcontroller. It's a uh, STM32 uh, sort of sort of thing you had in your router, 168 megahertz processor. And the hardware is also open source. Uh, we've published all the design files. Um, however, we get them made commercially by um, our friends in China and uh, they're available uh, for purchase. Um, they currently run just two modes, 1600 and 700D. Uh, the hardware was designed by uh, Rick and his uh, call sign details there uh, several years ago. We had a great time building that project together. Uh, that's a little bit about what the, uh, well, it's a photo of the SM1000. Um, this shows the rear of the case with all the connections to your radio. Um, there's 3.5 millimeter connections for the audio. Uh, you can also plug in um, a headset and uh, push to talk, a, a microphone switch, things like that. Uh, it can also connect to your radio through an RJ45 uh, for the radios that support that. And there's a small patch panel inside that lets you configure it for your particular radio's RJ45 configuration. A few little trimmers that you set up for your radio to get the levels right. And on the front, which I haven't shown here, but there's uh, volume control and uh, indicator LEDs, mode switches, that sort of thing. The other way you can use FreeDV is through uh, the API. There's just an open source C library. Um, it comes in C code form and that can be compiled uh, and uh, included in any SDR project. So there's a couple of example projects here. Um, one is the UH SDR project uh, from Danilo and his team. Um, and that's a um, STM32 based uh, SDR receiver. It uses a similar processor to what we've got on the SM1000. And Danilo's done a lot of fine work on optimizing uh, the FreeDV code to run in real time with all the other signal processing that's going on on that radio. So that's uh, an example of using the FreeDV library inside a uh, software defined radio, an embedded one. Um, also the Quisk project from Jim, um, he's also uh, embedded, that's a, a GUI based uh, desktop type application. And that's also included uh, FreeDV just by linking in the library. And of course it's all open source, no license fees. So uh, quite easy and straightforward to use. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the people who are involved in the project. Um, this is Steve. Um, he's been um, a great help with the OFDM modem development. Now, the OFDM modem is what we use for um, the current um, 700C, D, uh, sorry, 700D and 2020 modes. Um, and that uh, provides very good performance uh, with a very small bandwidth. 
um, and Steve uh, was involved with a lot of the development in that and has done a fine job and continues to help maintain the modem. So uh, thank you, Steve. Um, there's a lot of software in this project, hundreds and hundreds of files. And uh, one of the uh, sort of plumbing tasks we need to do is manage to build all that software. And, and that's done with a, a make file system. Um, and Richard um, is consistently you know, on a weekly basis maintaining that and keeping that running. So uh, really, uh, really, really important job. And Richard does a, a fine job in helping us uh, just keep all this complicated software building cleanly across multiple operating systems uh, and applications. So uh, thank you, Richard. Um, Munir is uh, the OSX maintainer. Um, he's um, helping us, as I said, the, the FreeDV GUI application runs on various different operating systems and he's um, specializing in keeping it running on uh, OSX, uh, which is a slightly different version of uh, Unix to uh, uh, Linux and uh, FreeBSD, et cetera. So it requires a little bit of uh, tweaking to keep it running on OSX and Munir's done a fine job uh, with that recently. Um, Don, um, did some great work over the last couple of years in getting um, the FreeDV 700D mode uh, ported across to the SDM1000, uh, which runs the SDM32 processor. Um, now, this is a very complicated algorithm, and uh, I've got a little bit more about that on the next slide. But uh, John uh, Don has brought a lot of experience and uh, and did a fine job on that. So um, this was a project, I guess, over the last couple of years that we worked on together. Um, Don brought a lot of uh, of his experience as a retired embedded systems engineer. And um, there's a lot of complex DSP going on in this algorithm. We've got the voice codec, uh, we've got the OFDM modem that Steve developed, uh, and we've got some LDPC forward error correction codes that are you know, pretty close to state of the art. And we've got all this running on a little memory constrained system uh, in real time uh, on a little 160 megahertz, megahertz processor. Um, the other thing that Don and Danilo brought to uh, this project was uh, some very professional automated testing. Uh, we have around 40 automated tests just for the STM32 that test various aspects of the software um, at, a, at a touch of a button, which takes a lot of load off for us as the developers and lets us know very quickly when we break things. And we break things all the time, so we need these tests uh, to know that things keep running. So uh, we released the new SM1000 firmware with the 700D mode um, mid last year. There's been a few tweaks since then, and it's uh, we had fun, did some did some fine work, uh, working together from different points in the world. Uh, Danilo's in Germany, Don's uh, well very close to where the conference is being uh, hosted, and uh, I'm down here in South Australia. Okay, um, the FreeDV 700C and 700D modes, uh, they're currently the sort of standard mode for HF operation. Uh, 700C came first and then um, had a few brainstorms and uh, developed that into 700D. They both use the same 700 bits per second codec. So on a good channel, they'll both sound uh, identically in terms of speech quality. Um, but they have a different approach to the modem and the forward error correction and, and how we overcome the uh, difficulties of the HF channel. And HF channels are hard to get digital voiceover. Um, SSB does do a fine job, and it's only recently that we're starting to compete with um, SSB, at, uh, in particular at low signal to noise ratios. Um, the quality of this codec is low to moderate. Um, it does take a bit of getting used to, um, but um, once you do get used to it, um, basically it carries rag chew conversation just fine. Um, and people get used to it after a little while. Um, SSB does take some getting used to for the non people who aren't used to it as well. So uh, it's just a bit of a different experience, but a similar learning curve. Uh, these two modes have allowed us to get a lot of on-air experience. And we're actually finding that um, one works better than the other in different conditions. For example, um, 700C transmits the voice signal twice at two different frequencies. And that's like transmit diversity that overcomes some of the fading. If um, if one half of the channel's faded, then maybe the other half's okay. And uh, the demodulator puts those two sets of carriers back together and um, you get a reasonable sort of signal. Uh, 700D um, sends the signal once but puts uh, forward error correction on it. So uh, that corrects the errors using the forward error correction bit rather than uh, 700C, which uses transmit diversity. So we found that 700C works better on fast fading channels and 700D works better on slow fading, low SNR channels. So 700D will go a bit lower in SNR, uh, down to as low as minus two dB SNR. 
and 700 C is a bit better when you've got those uh, really fast fades. Uh, why this is tr uh, happening? Well, we're still working that out. This is experimental radio. The two waveforms have different approaches. And um, yeah, this is the sort of thing that we, we investigate and uh, use those lessons to push the whole system forward. Okay, uh, the next thing that's uh, been pretty exciting over the last year or so is um, neural net speech coding, in particular LPC net. Now, um, over the last several years, um, there's been some a bit of a breakthrough in the quality of speech synthesis that's been pioneered by Google using techniques such as uh, machine learning and deep learning. Uh, it was initially developed for speech synthesis, but it was applied to speech coding uh, in 2018. Uh, and uh, they actually used Codec 2 to demonstrate that system. They used the Codec 2 encoder, but they swapped out the Codec 2 decoder and used a special um, neural net decoder. And that made vastly better speech quality with the same bitstream. So they just, they didn't change the encoder at all. They just swapped out the speech decoder and got vastly better quality. So it showed that um, using these neural net techniques, we can get much better quality, but in a uh, lower bit rate. However, this initial work was closed source and it required a GPU card, a GPU graphics card to run. So very heavy in CPU loading. Uh, enter John Mark, um, a friend of mine who's a Canadian open source developer. Um, he looked at these neural net systems and developed um, a new one called LPCNet, which is both open source uh, and efficient. And he managed to get it to the point where it could run on high end um, uh, desktop CPUs. Now, I took John Mark's work and I've been applying it to uh, Digital Voice uh, over HF Radio in 3DV. So thank you, uh, John Mark, for that work. Which brought us the 3DV 2020 mode. So we use the LPC Net codec, uh, which has been quantized to around about 1700 bits per second. And on top of that, we apply a, a powerful forward error correction code, um, an LDPC code, low density parity check code, uh, that was developed by Bill. A colleague of mine here in South Australia. Um, we used the same modem, so we took the modem that was working fairly well for uh, 700D that was developed by Steve. Um, and what we've got, um, with a bit of help from integration, and um, thank you, Brad, um, he did a lot of work on getting the, the GUI side and audio streams running. Uh, we've got eight kilohertz audio, so it's similar audio to what we're using today for this. Uh, eight kilohertz audio, AM, what radio type uh, broadcast bandwidth? but we can send it in only 1600 hertz of RF bandwidth. So it uses less than a regular SSB uh, channel for the RF bandwidth to get high quality audio. Um, this is available in FreeDV 1.4 now, uh, which you can download at any time. And I, I think it's the first neural net vocoder on air, at least I haven't heard of anyone else doing it. So uh, this is ham radio um, you know, leading the pack. There's nothing like it in the commercial or closed source world. Okay, now I'll try a demo. I'll have to try and share my audio um, and I'll show you um, the difference between regular SSB and uh, FreeDV 2020. Now, where's the magic share audio button? New share annotate. share computer sound okay um, now just be careful those of you with headphones I'm just the levels may not be quite the same what you hear about my voice so uh, okay so the first thing I'll play um, is the original this is a little bit of broadcast audio from our, our regional Australian um, uh, weekly broadcast I'll then play what it sounds like um, on SSB at about a 10 dB signal to noise ratio uh, and then I'll play it to you um, coded using the um, FreeDV 2020 algorithm, the LPC Net codec. Okay, so original audio. Uh... From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Okay, is that coming through okay, organisers? Good, thank you. I'll now play what it sounds like as SSB. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. And now with uh, FreeDV 2020. From Australia, this is VK1 WIA. So there you go, that's the difference in quality. I'll play the two again, this is the SSB. From Australia, this is VK1 WIA. And the FreeDV 2020. 
from Australia. This is BK1WIA. Okay, I'll play. I've got some slightly uh, longer uh, samples here that I'll do again with the SSB and the FreeDV 2020. This is, uh, once again, an excerpt from our uh, local news broadcast. This is the SSB at 10 dB SNR. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet, streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello there, I'm Graham, vk 4 B. The National News for week commencing January 2019 in our 24th year of non-stop news and a pretty eventful and violent week at the WIA News Desk this week. OK, and now the Free TV 2020. From Australia, this is VK1 WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet, streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hi there, I'm Graham VK4 Double B. The national news for week commencing January 2019 in our 24th year of non stop news and a pretty eventful and violent week at the WIA news desk this week. Okay, so there you go. So you can see the quality is quite a bit higher. Um, it's uh, still not artifact free. It's not quite as high quality as the codex I am using at the moment, but it's doing it a very small fraction of the bit rate. Um, also, it's just our starting point. We will get better. Okay, now I'd like to show you a demonstration of FreeDV 700D. Now this is much lower speech quality, but it's designed for lower uh, SNR channels, in particular competing at the very, you know, where SSB is barely usable. Um, so we've, we've chosen a day where we had a really bad path to demonstrate the two. And this is between Adelaide and um, Bay of Islands, which is uh, just north of Auckland, New Zealand. And that's about 3,200 kilometres uh, uh, path. Now, this has a lot of noise in it. Please lower your volume a little bit. I don't want to hurt your ears. So it's a mixture of uh, analog and uh, SSB. Sorry, it starts mixture of SSB and 700D, starting with the SSB, then digital, then uh, back to SSB. And this is Victor Kilo 5, Quebec India. Victor Kilo 5, Quebec India, running approximately 100 watts of TDP. Nearly in training on the signal at the moment. Uh, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is 3DV 700D, approximately 100 watts through a very, very poor signal path. Uh, this is KY5, Quebec India, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now switching back to analog. And this is Victor KY5, Quebec India, Victor KY5, Quebec. Okay, so you can sort of uh, hear the difference there. Um, so that was Mark VK5QI doing some tests of the uh, early. 3UV 700D system. Um, in the middle of it too, the digital broke up as well. It reached that threshold where the modem lost it. So that's sort of right at the edge. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk now about a couple of interesting ways people have been using 3DV. Um, it's You throw this stuff out in the wild, especially when it's open source and you never know who's going to email you and say, look what I've done. Um, one thing that's been happening is some group of people in both uh, the UK and uh, in South America have been using FreeDV over Kiwi SDRs. So a network of uh, web-based SDRs that you can log on to and use as a remote receiver. Uh, what you can do is using virtual audio cables and um, some plumbing in your computer is pipe the audio from these uh, web-based SDRs like Kiwi SDRs into FreeDV and then use that as your remote receiver. So that's been used for a couple of purposes. Uh, one is to assist in um, uh, propagation. You know, if you don't have a path, you can choose a receiver that might be able to pick it up. Sometimes that's a bit closer, or sometimes it's just a slightly different location in your own city uh, or state.
David, we've lost your audio. This is obviously with a commercial codec, right? If only it was running codec two. <laughs> so it looks like I'm still streaming to YouTube, so our channel is fine, but. Okay, I think you just realized. Your audio sample was spectacular, by the way. It just had this odd Australian accent. A delightful Australian accent. Delightful. That's right. Delightful Australian accent. Rid of the headset. Hey. There we go. You got it. You're back. Yeah. Must have been something wrong with the headset. I'll go to the laptop mic. Okay, so we'll proceed on from there. Apologies to everyone for that. So as the audio guy has the audio problems, isn't it? it okay. It's been that way all day for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so back to the present that share screen coming through. All right. Good. All right. Okay, so I'd like to talk about some of the uh, novel usages of um, 3DV. Um, there's been a group of uh, UK and uh, South American hams who have been using um, Kiwi SDRs as the receivers for their free DV and QSOs. So uh, you run the SDR on your web browser and then you can pipe the audio through to the input of free DV using uh, virtual audio cables. And um, let's get rid of this. Uh... Oops, that's Jose. Okay. So. Um, a couple of reasons people do this. Uh, one is to um, assist in propagation, and another is to get around urban noise. So if your receiver is anything like mine or your location, it's getting very hard to receive some HF uh, signals locally. Two people who have been using it to get over propagation are Jose, who lives in a small town in southern Argentina, and Peter, uh, who lives uh, in Melbourne, uh, Victoria, uh, which is uh, about 800 kilometers east of where I am, uh, one of the major Australian cities. Uh, they use a, a variety of SDRs, but they often settle on a common uh, meeting point uh, at an Auckland SDR, which is uh, 3,000 kilometers from Peter and 10,000 from uh, Jose. And uh, that manages, they manage to make QSOs over this path. Uh, they tend to use 3DV700C. Um, that seems to work a lot better over what's a, a southern polar path. Uh, you get quite a lot of fading. Uh, fairly modest equipment. Um, for example, Jose is just using 40 watts and a delta loop. Um, and what they're doing with this is um, they're getting, um, you know, daily uh, rad tube type uh, conversations. Um, this is not shouting your, your call sign five times and reporting five by nine. This is uh, talking about the grandkids and uh, what's happening and the weather and things like that. Um, they're doing that on, you know, modest power levels over a pretty long path and they're doing it every day. Uh, they're doing it reliably. Um, so uh, it just shows what can be done with a little bit of assistance from the SDRs here. So this is Jose. Um, now Jose is possibly the most enthusiastic 3D user on the planet. He's uh, constantly on the mailing lists and uh, popping up in all sorts of places, uh, in particular via the SDRs. Uh, very enthusiastic, lovely gentleman. He's a um, semi-retired surgeon. He's um, been helping out lately, doing a bit of consulting with the Corona virus uh, via video. So he stepped back in to help out there. He comes from um, three generations of hands, his father, his son, and himself, which is wonderful. And um, he's very um, done a lot of work in using these Kiwi SDRs to bridge propagation and uh, make contacts all over the world uh, pretty much any time. Um, some other experiments they've done with Peter is uh, full duplex uh, calls uh, using 3DV. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, the, unfortunately, the latency um, through the SDRs and 3DV is pretty high, so you've got several seconds, but nevertheless, uh, full duplex is pretty interesting. And uh, he's operating every day uh, on 3DV uh, with Peter and with other people. And, and this is Peter in Melbourne. Um, looks like he's running 3DV on a couple of laptops uh, in the photo there. So uh, that's a typical sort of operator uh, situation. 
Um, Peter's a retired electrical engineer um, and, and a radio historian. He's done some wonderful work on um, history of radio going right back to the beginning of the last century and some uh, very early contacts he's documented and written several articles and books on the subject. Uh, he's worked quite a few free TV stations over the past years and his partner is also a ham that runs free TV. And uh, he gets a bit teased because her voice sounds a bit better over free TV than he does, uh, apparently. So uh, <laughs> a bit of a friendly competition there. And uh, his message to everyone was that if he can do it, uh, you guys can do it. Okay, another interesting uh, application is uh, over QO100. Um, a friend of mine, Gerhard, in Austria, um, has access to QO100 as it's sitting, um, as you probably all know, it's sitting geostationary over uh, covering uh, Africa and Europe and the Middle East. Uh, and he was interested in running Free TV 2020 over the satellite. So uh, it's uh, geosynchronous. It has the interesting thing is, unlike many other satellites, it's got a linear transponder, so it can run SSB. Um, however, there are bandwidth limitations, um, which rules out most other digital modes except for Free TV, which was designed for narrow bandwidth. So uh, Gerhard started running uh, 2020, but had problems uh, with decoding and synchronization of the signal. Um, so he sent us a few samples and Steve and I um, sort of equidistant around the world from Gerhard went to work on this. And we discovered that um, there was a lot more phase noise. Um, so the phase of the signal was drifting around all over the place compared to say the HF channel. And the reason for that is probably all of the um, up and down conversion stages, all those local oscillators spinning around um, when you're getting up and down from microwave frequencies uh, back to baseband. So um, we modified the modem. It's open source, right? We got stuck into it. We looked at what was wrong and we modified the modem to suit the channel. Um, and then we submitted the code back to Gerhard for testing. So it was kind of nice. Three of us were working in three different time zones, uh, three, you know, all around the world from each other to code test and debug. And uh, we got it working. He can make 2020 contacts. Still a few little bugs with initial synchronization, but um, certainly uh, usable. And uh, people are also running some of the other free TV modes over QO100 as well. Um, it's an interesting, the channel doesn't have much fading, but and it's about 10 dB SNR all the time. So the quality is a little bit like what I demonstrated to you before. Uh, and that's uh, Gerhard's antenna that uh, he uses, uh, one of the antennas that he uses for QO100. Okay, why not free TV? Um, it's not that popular. There aren't that too many people out there at the moment. Um, so one of the complaints is, who do I talk to? Um, the difficulty, there is a bit of difficulty in setup with the two sound cards. It takes a bit of work and um, it, that sometimes can be difficult. It, it's easier if you get some help, but uh, some people struggle with that. Um, this is experimental ham radio. Um, it's not like DRM where it comes in a box, you can press a button and use it. Um, some um, if it is required to use it and get it set up, uh, once you're experienced with it, it's uh, fairly straightforward. It's constantly evolving. We're pushing new modes out. So uh, some people like um, things to be the same. Um, I like, uh, I guess my personality is I like to be on the bleeding edge and experimenting. Um, I'm not that interested in uh, Windows USB sound card driver problems. I'm more interested in getting a new mode working. So uh, that's where I like to play. Um, there's little commercial support, except Flex does support some uh, older modes. Um, some people complain about the speech quality with the lower bitrate modes, uh, but we found that uh, one gets used to that and that uh, it carries conversation just fine. So it's a little bit like uh, SSB in the early 1950s, uh, pioneering, leading edge stuff. Some of the technologies that we get to play with, well, it's got the, uh, the world's only open source, low bitrate speech codec in it. Um, the modem we've got is a coherent um, OFDM QPSK HF modem. Uh, a lot of um, HF modems are differential PSK and we can get much better performance using coherent techniques, uh, several dBs. Um, the raw modem, um, we, we send around 1400 bits per second at minus 2 dB SNR um, or 4000 bits per second at 2 dB SNR for the, um, the uh, 2020 mode. We don't really go higher in that bit rate because we don't need it. Um, so low bitrate speech coding. Uh, some of the other technology in there is we have a, an FSK, FSK modem who has uh, ideal performance. It's a bang on theory. We use that for some modes. Uh, there's some powerful forward error correction uh, technology in there. Uh, neural net speech coding. Uh, the whole thing runs cross platform on a variety of operating systems and hardware platforms. We have uh, some of this code running on a, a small microcontroller 
and uh, on Raspberry Pis. Uh, we work with each other on GitHub and have a bunch of automated tests on Travis. Around about 100 of them run uh, now when we modify any code. We can run through a suite of tests and uh, make sure it keeps running. Um, I do all my development on Linux and I use a, um, a Docker container that runs Fedora Linux to build the Windows. There's a bunch of cross compilers that build the uh, Windows code for me. So I can fix a bug in Linux, press a button and it pops out Windows installers uh, in a few minutes that I can post on my website for the uh, Windows people to try. And the whole lot is open source. So anyone's able to get in there, experiment, play around. Um, just an example of two, I guess, what I do day to day. Um, I do work um, a few days a week, uh, part time, but then I, uh, in terms of my own projects, um, this week I've been looking at some tests on OSX, reviewing some of the fine work that uh, uh, Munir was doing. Uh, another nice gentleman from the UK submitted some fixes for the uh, 800 bits per second FSK mode, and I've worked on those with him. I've been sidetracked into a new balloon telemetry uh, protocol. Uh, We've done a little bit of work on telemetry protocols for high altitude balloons. I'm working on that with uh, Mark and Bill. And this protocol is going to work down to minus, minus 160 dBm signal strengths. Uh, every 20 seconds, you'll get a packet of a 128 or 256 bits at very low signal levels. Uh, and fixing my fan dipole. Um, I do all right in the software, but I'm not so great on the hardware. So uh, I've got to the point where my dipole is not falling down every week now. It's only falling down once every two months. So. Uh, <laughs> That's the sort of thing I've been up to. Um, medium term, I guess where I'm going with this work, um, I like the experimental side. So I'm looking at uh, doing some more work with the neural networks and in particular how to combine the neural networks and the traditional uh, quantization techniques we use for speech coding. And the general direction here is improving the speech quality uh, at a given bit rate and getting it more robust over this um, tricky HF channel. So that's kind of the, the general direction that I'm, I'm moving in. Okay, so um, just to summarize, um, FreeDB is open source for digital voice. Uh, with the 700D mode, um, we have some cases where we can outperform SSB at low SNR. Uh, 2020 is kind of exciting. That uses one of these brand new uh, uh, neural net vocoders and lets you send eight kilohertz wide audio in 1600 hertz of RF bandwidth. Um, the major resource is the freedb.org website. You can download uh, a bunch of the software you need to get started and it's got links for support. And uh, I've been told by um, uh, Walter, um, K5WH, that he's standing by on 14.236, if anyone would like to uh, have a QSO on 3 dv and uh, a bunch of the other guys uh, who use 3 dv in North America. Uh, and then there's my blog as well. Okay, so that's the end of the formal talk, but happen to open up for questions or move to the meeting room, uh, whatever works. Um, I do have some questions actually that came from the the YouTube stream. What? Sure. And yeah. uh, let's see here. So the first one is, uh, does the C library still require floating point? Yes. That was so, easy. Yeah. <laughs> not much. Not much work's been gone into making it uh, fixed point. Fixed point. point. I remember yeah. seeing some response some years ago that more and more devices are getting floating point anyway. So. Yeah, well, we have it on our smallest platform. So. We I haven't seen it as a big problem. Right. Um, so you mentioned in here that, that there had to be two cards to configure. Is you're talking about each end of the link or, or are you talking about, do I don't need on any one station, I don't need two sound cards, do I? Yes, you need two sound cards at your station. So you need one for your headset and microphone and one talking to the radio. That's for oh. if you, sorry, that's for a transmit receive. Right, okay. Two sound cards on every station. Sure, okay, that makes sense. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, I wonder if we could replace Ambi with Codec 2 on open. Maybe I should put my glasses on. Open GD77. I don't know what Open GD77 is, but. Neither do I. Yeah. I'm happy to address that in an email or in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the other one here says uh, I'm interested in the possibility of integrating free DV based networks into existing infrastructure, e.g., IRLP, so VHF users in cities can be linked to remote areas via HF. Sure, yeah. Well, there's um, a lot of the, uh, like the libraries and that sort of thing are there, ready to be linked into other applications. So that's certainly possible. Excellent. All right. I don't think I have any more questions at the moment. Uh, I think. 
All right, I think that's all we have for now. If you're available to hang out in the in the room, I'm sure there are more questions. There simply okay. must be. Um, so, oh, okay. So apparently they broke the breakout room. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be back up in a minute. Um, so anyway, I appreciate you very much for hanging out with us this morning. Thank for you, you our evening. Looks like you've got some sun there too. Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a uh, an amazing day here today in Seattle, so that was a little bit of a competition for us here. It's uh, it's one of our rare, beautiful yeah. springtime days, right? So, okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, you should have a link for it, correct, for the breakout room? Yes, we've got that in the email, so I'll okay. leave this call and head across there. All right. So uh, I'll go ahead and th th I can't tell if they've got the room up, but it should be up momentarily. Right. It, it's up. Okay. So. Yeah, if anybody has any more questions for David, please stop by. David, thank you again very, very much for hanging out with us today. And, thank you for uh, having me. And we're um, we're ready to go. So uh, we'll go ahead and let you go, and okay. uh, we'll get ready for the next person. Thank you.